How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. Now a couple of weeks back we took a look at MSI's B450i Gaming Plus Mini ITX motherboard which was really a great option if you want to build a small compact system, still be able to overclock your Ryzen CPU but not really pay that much. But it was really tiny and most of you don't want to build a tiny system. So luckily today we have the MSI B450M Mortar which is more reasonably sized and then also it's more affordable. So with all of that being said, let's jump into our review of the B450M Mortar right after this. But just before we get into the video, I just want to remind you guys that I am uploading a lot of my gameplay footage from my live streams, just random videos, or vlogs, reactions, anything like that on my second channel, We Do Stuff. So if you wanted to check out more of my videos, definitely subscribe to We Do Stuff. There's a lot of stuff coming in the near future and there's a lot of stuff saying in this video. So yeah, definitely check out We Do Stuff. Do you live in South Africa and want to get the best deals on all the latest gaming products? Well, Rebeltech is the best place to check out. They have a huge variety of peripherals, PC components, laptops, and just everything else you would need. So go check out rebeltech.crza to get the products you are looking for at a low price. So now starting off with the pricing for the Mortar, it is retailing for around 1,800 Rand on Rebeltech here in South Africa or $110 on Amazon. That will give you a grey and a black MATX board with a very military style look, hence the name Mortar of course. You do also get the titanium version which is more silver and white but it does cost a tiny bit more so you do have two options that you can go for depending on the color scheme. Now it's pretty much still the AM4 socket which supports both the Ryzen 1 and then Ryzen 2 CPUs and will support all of the Ryzen chips up till 2020 which is really awesome. Now the nice thing about the B450 boards is that you can still overclock your CPU like the X470 range but not pay as much. So with the overclocking for this board it does have six chokes, a 4 plus 2 phase of VRM which is being controlled by an RT8894 a multi-phase PWM controller. Now as for temperatures for the VRMs, it does have a pretty large heat spreader that extends somewhat over the I.O. which definitely helps with cooling and then also it looks pretty cool in my opinion. Now I did use a 2700X which I overclocked to 4.2 GHz at 1.425 volts where the VRMs did reach around 85 degrees in an open test bench without active cooling. I did have some problems with the PCH sensor where it kind of freaked out now and then where it showed extremely high highs and then just no temps at all but sometimes it was completely fine. So I'm not too sure what was happening there but I'm sure a BIOS update will fix that. Now then as for a memory, the B450 Mortar does support a dual channel memory with its four DIMM slots, it supports a max of 64GB of DDR4 memory that goes up to 3466MHz with an overclock applied. Now for the PCI Express ports, you do get your PCI Express 3.0 full-time slot running at 16x speed. Below that you get a two PCI Express 2.0 one-time slots and then at the bottom you get your full-size PCI Express 2.0 4x speed slot so it will be able to support a crossfire if you want to go for multiple GPUs. Now then as for storage you do get a two M.2 slots uh, being a PCI Express 3.0 with the top one running at 4x speed and the bottom one running at 2x speed both supporting the 2280 size M.2 SSDs. You also get a four SATA 3 ports that supports RAID 0, 1 and 10 and then it does support AMD's Store MI which allows you to link up your SSD with your mechanical hard drive to get a better performance. 
Now, something to keep in mind is that when you install M.2 in the bottom M.2 slot, the bottom PCI Express slot will be disabled. You can't use both of them at the same time. Along with that, you will only be able to use one of the 1X slots at a single time. If you use both of them, one of them will be disabled also. Now, taking a look at the back I.O., you do get a BIOS flashback button if you run into any problems. You also get your PS2 combo port, two USB 2.0 ports, an HDMI port, a display port, four USB 3.1 Gen 1 type A ports, your gigabit ethernet port, your USB 3.1 Gen 2 type A port, one USB 3.1 Gen 2 type C port, your HD audio connections, and then your optical SP diff out connection. Now just some other connections you get on the board is your standard 24 pin for the motherboard, 8 pin for the CPU, you get your USB 3.1 Gen 1 for your front I.O., you get a 4 fan headers, and then finally for RGB, the motor doesn't really have a lot going on there. You only get red LEDs behind the board, and then two 12 volt RGB headers. So that's it for my rundown of MSI's B450M Mortar motherboard. A perfect option if you want to go for something more affordable, but still get all of the needed performance and features uh, for your money. If you want to pair it up with a 2700X, you can. I would again say that it's more likely that you would pair it up with something like the 2600X just for the, for the price range. So if you want to pair that, it's going to work perfectly. You're going to get a good overclocks out of it. Temps is going to be fine and you're going to just going to get everything that you would need. Again, if you want to go for the more white version, you can go for the titanium. It does cost a bit more, but it's going to look very nice. And then also, if you do want to get either of those boards, I will leave links in the video description where you can get it on Rebeltech if you live in South Africa or Amazon if you live overseas. Also, a big thanks to MSI for sending over the Mortar for this review. And if you guys have any other motherboards or whatever you want me to review, let me know down in the comments below. But that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will check all of you next time. Cheers, guys.